In uh, this video, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of lamp working with uh, a Smith mini hand torch. Uh, I'll take a photo of the uh, torch and uh, edit it into this video. Uh, I have a uh, third party uh, nozzle uh, attached to the, uh, the Smith mini torch, uh, which really uh, improves its performance uh, for uh, borosilicate. And what I'm using right now is three millimeter borosilicate rod. Earlier this week when I was uh, speaking with one of our professors uh, at, uh, at Radford, uh, he asked me if I could make a uh, sample holder uh, for some of the uh, research that he's doing. And uh, uh, he uh, had some material, uh, metal, uh, that could have been used, but the issue is uh, making that sample holder out of uh, a metal uh, could cause contamination. And so I started playing around with uh, some ideas for the design uh, and how to just how to how to get it done using uh, borosilicate rod. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just uh, give a very quick. Uh, demo of that. So uh, I've taken the borosilicate rod and bent it. And what I'm going to do, and I'm eyeballing it now, I could try and measure this a little bit better, uh, is I'm essentially going to make a square. Uh, heating that up. Now you might ask, you know, why am I using the little mini torch? Uh, move this down a little bit. And it's simply because uh, I haven't used the mini torch in about a year, uh, so I decided to uh, pull it out of mothballs uh, and uh, and use it for this project uh, because uh, three millimeter uh, borosilicate rod uh, should be very easy to work with with this little torch, and and it is. Uh, I really haven't uh, used this mini torch uh, for too many projects but it's on my list of uh, several things I'd like to do. Now, my square is not perfectly squared, uh, but I'm okay with that. Uh, what I'm going to do, actually, let me pull this back just a teeny bit. There we go. Uh, right now, uh, these two are, or this, uh, this rod is uh, not connected. Notice it hasn't formed a weld, so I'm going to go ahead and get this. So I brought it out of the flame to hopefully make it a little easier to see what I'm doing. I'm uh, with my left. I am I'm holding the glass with tweezers. With my right, I've got uh, plenty of uh, three millimeter rod. Uh, to act as a punty, and right now I'm just warming this up uh, to get a, a reasonably good weld. Uh, now, uh, what I like to do, or and and by like, uh, I've I've done uh, uh, three or four of uh, the, the, these type of projects in the last week, so not a tremendous amount of experience. But what I like to do is have the punty uh, where it's coming off the corner. Uh, like this, so you know it's about 45 degrees depending on your your angle, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, cleaning up that weld. And the reason why is as I heat this up, unless I hold it very carefully uh, with the tweezers, uh, I start to lose control over it. And for what I'm about to do, I I really don't need uh, that. No. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse a glass rod uh, about in the center like this. And what I found is you could fuse the glass rod like this where both ends are directly on top uh, of this square that I formed. Uh, but what I found, what I like to do is uh, essentially fuse the first part uh, on the uh, in, inside the plane uh, of the square 
and then uh, at the bottom, I'll seal it off and it'll be on the top. Uh, it, honestly, this, this is something that uh, there, there are many pros and cons of, of how I'm going to do it, uh, I'm sure, uh, that I really haven't thought about, but uh, it works and I like doing it this way. So first I'm just going to heat up this rod, get it molten, and then get it into position. And I'm, I'm eyeballing it right now. So right now I'm, I'm sure this is much more of a cold sealed uh, than anything else. I'm going to give it a little bit more heat. I'm going to try not to uh, distort anything too much. So that should be, should be pretty decent. And you can see it actually kind of rose up a little bit uh, because I was pushing on it to form that seal. So that's why I like to start it a little bit like on the inside of the plane of the square. So let me heat that up. There we go. Uh, now, and I mostly, uh, I'm switching positions right now, uh, mostly for the camera uh, to make it easier to see what I'm, what I'm doing. Hopefully it's easier to see what I'm doing. And you can see I've taken the rod and I've kind of uh, moved it down the side as I'm as I'm making this this seal. Pull some of this glass off. I got a little bit a little bit more of a tail of glass uh, than I wanted to, so I'm gonna I'm gonna heat this blob up and pull it off. I could actually work that into the seal, but it's fine. So now what have I accomplished? Well, I've actually made uh, two very bad welds. In other words, if I stopped right now, which uh, is very tempting, uh, this weld and this weld are not very good, not very uniform. But that's okay, because uh, I just wanted to get the two uh, the, the glass uh, fused in those two positions. And so now I'm going to come back and heat it very strongly uh, to finish the weld. Now, just to make sure uh, that I don't uh, have the glass uh, pop off on me, break off on me, uh, while I'm working on one seal, uh, uh, I'm basically going to alternate, go back and forth, get this one in a, what looks like a reasonably good state, and then come back and work on the other. So they're both, like I said, uh, not uniform. But you'll see as I progress that we can bring it in. Uh, on, on the opposite side of the first weld, and that's like I said, that's also a very good sign. I, uh, right now, I'm, I'm freehanding everything. In other words, I, I haven't made any measurements. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the this glass rod being exactly in the center. Uh, but it actually looks pretty close, uh, maybe off by a couple millimeters. Uh, the other thing is, uh, it's not perfectly level, uh, but if I really wanted it to be, in other words, if I wanted the middle rod to be in the same plane as the other two, I could keep working it and then eventually, uh, either with tweezers or a graphite rod, uh, give it a little bit of a push to uh, to move it down. So that's why when I started, uh, I had one of the glass rods in the plane and the other one was kind of on the top just because it's easier. In other words, if, if your goal is to do this, if your goal is to have your piece of glass perfectly measured and fit the top and the bottom exactly on the inside of the uh, uh, this case, you know, this little square, and then tack weld both of them, uh, good luck to you because uh, that's going to be difficult to position. Uh, you could definitely do it, uh, but I think it would be more trouble than it's worth, and especially if you're beginning. And really what, uh, why I'm showing this demo is this is about uh, if you're a beginner and you want to uh, get some really good practice on scientific glass blowing, uh, making some small objects using a small torch like this and three millimeter uh, borosil K rod is an excellent way, I think, uh, of, of learning these, these fundamentals. 
uh, in other words, if you make a bad seal, uh, you'll you'll see it very quickly. The other thing is with certain uh, operations uh, with three millimeter glass, like for example, if I wanted to make Maria's with it, uh, that's actually more challenging with the three millimeter uh, than say if I was using uh, you know uh, five, six, seven, eight, you know, and, and beyond. Uh, uh, so it will force you uh, to uh, to develop your technique. So uh, I've got uh, this glass rod, you know, sealed on both ends, and if I make sure I'm still in focus. Uh, bring this a little closer, take a look at it. Uh, these welds look pretty good. Now, is there stress here? Uh, of course. Uh, there's gonna be stress throughout this entire thing. Uh, what I like to do is once I've got uh, uh, essentially the whole thing bridged up, uh, I can come back to each one of these corners and soften them. And that certainly will minimize uh, any stress if I'm concerned about uh, one of my bends uh, going to uh, essentially crack at some point. Uh, here I'm just giving it a very, very light heating and that should soften it enough. I want to be careful here because I've got my punty. When all is said and done, uh, for the uh, uh, working piece, the sample tray, uh, you, uh, if uh, I took it and annealed it, put it in the annealing oven, uh, and that removed uh, the stress. In this case, uh, I'm not even going to bother with, say, a torch anneal uh, because I'm not, I'm not really concerned about uh, this becoming anything. So now what I'm going to do, uh, and I really should clean the end of it, uh, this glass rod, because it's basically it's it's not uh, even fire polished. But I'm I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm now I'm eyeballing it. And I'm basically going to try and weld it uh, right about there. So I'm, I'm seating it in, and I'm coming in here. And I don't want to push too hard. I want it to be firmly in position, but I don't want to push too hard. But at the same time, if I don't give it a little bit of a push, it can move. So I see it becomes a little bit liquid there, so I back off. If you push too hard and you deform the top, uh, once you complete the welds, you can come back and, uh, and fix that. Uh, so now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to heat the center of this rod a little bit. So that way it, it essentially bends so I can have a good point of contact when I come over here. Line that up. And I'm, as I'm, as I'm uh, uh, moving it over here, I'm kind of swiping the glass down so that way it makes contact. Uh, so now at this point, uh, I've got this effectively tack welded on, but it definitely needs some work. And you can see, hopefully, uh, that the, uh, the rods in the center are not uh, touching at this point. Uh, so I am going to correct that. Uh, but before I do that, I want to make sure that uh, on both ends uh, I have a uh, strong enough weld that uh, it, won't, it won't break on me uh, as I'm working the center. And obviously, a uh, glass rod being very rigid, uh, you might find yourself having to, you know, heat heat up here and then uh, push down somewhere else uh, to bring things into position. Uh, now, for this uh, demo that I'm doing, I'm not concerned about it being perfectly centered or even perfectly planar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat the top of that and then push it down a little bit. And you can see in doing that, I've made a, made a pretty big divot. Uh, and now I'm going to soften up both ends and then push it down just a little bit more. Hopefully that'll help bring it, bring the two pieces of uh, glass uh, either in contact or very close to it. So as I'm heating here, give this a little push. Okay. 
And that moved it a little bit, not very much. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on these two rods uh, in the center and essentially start pushing them closer and closer to each other uh, to get them to touch. Actually, here, I'll take the tweezers and squeeze that down. There we go. There are lots of different ways you could do this. Uh, I could take another piece of glass rod and put a little blob of glass between the two. Uh, that would essentially tack weld them together. Uh, I could take my graphite rod and push on it as I'm in the flame, but I'm just gonna stick with the tweezers and do that, mush them together. Now that I've got the center, uh, two rods touching each other, uh, and again, they're partially welded, I'm gonna come back to the ends and start heating those more strongly uh, to clean up those welds. And I'll be alternating back and forth uh, between these three welds, the top, the middle, the bottom. And again, if nothing else, this is uh, excellent practice for uh, working uh, in the flame when you're, when you're at a weird angle. Most of the operations you're doing, you're holding the glass rod like this and you're rotating. Uh, because everything that I'm working on right now is uh, not necessarily on axis, uh, I have to just uh, move it around and adjust. Another way I could have made this is uh, I could have uh, put together uh, a holding uh, uh, series of uh, clamps and rods uh, on, say, a ring stand, and then had all the glass in position, and then heated it with a torch, and then tack welded it, and then cleaned everything up. Uh, but uh, as I was thinking about uh, making this, I decided uh, this would also, like I said, be good practice for me uh, to have to do all of this uh, with the stationary torch, with it freehand, uh, and, and just move it around into position as needed. So this weld is pretty good. It's not completely done, but I do want to come back to it, or I do want to come back to this one uh, and then go from there. Part of how I'm uh, moving the glass around uh, uh, to uh, get it uniformly heated, uh, the, 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 for me it's a little awkward, uh, again, because on, I, I have to almost exclusively use my right hand because uh, the camera is on my left. So don't think that uh, my, my hand positioning is uh, necessarily... Uh, optimum, uh, it's just because uh, having the camera at this uh, close distance uh, is really good for uh, making this video, but it does interfere a little bit with uh, how I can position. In other words, if I'm positioning the glass, if I'm holding it with my left, I have to be really careful right now, uh, not just because of the torch, but because I don't want to smack the camera. So for me, I'd rather just do it all with my right uh, and uh, go from there. So both welds on the end, actually this one's not so not so good, uh, but both welds on the ends are decent, uh, and uh, I will come back to them one more time, uh, but now what I want to do is focus on this weld in the center. So what are we looking for when we're welding two pieces of glass. Uh, and uh, the most obvious answer is, well, you know, we don't want two pieces of glass, right? We don't want two glass rods. We want one glass rod. So what I need to do is I need to get all of this glass right in the center area uh, heated uniformly, heated to working temperature, so that they flow together. And instead of having two glass rods that are contact in contact, uh, I now have one glass rod 
uh, that has, again, that is fused in that spot. I could increase the intensity of the torch right now, uh, and that would certainly speed this up, but at the same time, I do like having this smaller, uh, smaller flame, sharper flame. I could actually sharpen this up a little bit, but it's pretty good right now. Uh, I'm working with my left hand, as I mentioned a little while ago, that I don't want to do it this way, but it is a better angle for some of the uh, welds that I'm trying to clean up, even though I risk, like I said, smacking the, smacking the camera. So. So I'm bringing it out of the flame, rotating it, taking a look at how, how uniform it is. Uh, and it looks pretty good. I could keep fussing with it, uh, but I, I think I'm okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and fuss with uh, the, the corners, especially like this right here. This would be an acceptable well. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, heat it strongly so that uh, it, it, the two pieces of glass uh, do more properly fuse together. It's definitely not a cold seal at this point, but the uniformity of the weld uh, could be improved. I could use, again, the tweezers to give it a little squish, but what I'm, again, trying to do in this exercise is uh, stick with the torch and gravity for shaping the glass as much as possible after the initial you know, uh, connection points were made. But in case you were wondering of, you know, can't you just smush it right there? Uh, the answer is yes but I'm afraid I would do more damage than good. And what I'm trying to do is come in here along these seams and get that all nice and hot so all of that glass uh, fused together. And this is something that, again, as you want to get more experience on uh, scientific glass blowing, making a, a little you know glass object that you could use to store something, uh, you know, hang some glass, uh, some some uh, equipment, uh, or the like. Doing doing uh, this type of exercise uh, uh, is a great way to pick up uh, a little bit of skill without again uh, worrying too much about uh, well, what happens if it breaks or whatever, because again, at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's just a small amount of three millimeter glass. So I'm going to come back and uh, clean up the other weld, which actually is probably, probably doesn't really need it, uh, but I'm going to heat it up a little bit more just to bring that a little closer to being uh, more uniform. And as you look at it from an angle, you can, you can see how, you know, it's kind of coming up uh, over uh, the plane of the square. So if I, if I wanted this to be perfectly level, I could heat these two glass rods uh, and move them into uh, the plane. Uh, probably the easiest way would be with the tweezers. But honestly, uh, I'm okay with, with how this is set up. Uh, from a stress point of view, what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, or to try and minimize some stress, uh, I'm going to come back to all four corners 
warm them up until they become a little bit soft. Okay, I don't want them, I don't want them moving too much. So do that. For the sample holder, uh, what I did was this uh, this punty, this connection rod, I kept it on till the end and actually bent it down and it became one of the legs uh, for holding the sample. I put a leg uh, on each corner. Uh, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the punty. So I'm gonna hold this with the tweezers and fire cut this off. This seal on the uh, lower corner, lower right corner, uh, needs some work. It's not, it's not very good. Uh, I could pull off a little blob of that glass right there, but I'm just going to work that in. And one of the things I find having a second pair of tweezers can be very useful in this type of uh, situation. I am holding the glass with the tweezers, which can be a problem as far as cracking. However, because of how thin this glass is, I don't think touching it with the, the metal tweezers uh, while it's still hot, is going to induce cracking. Uh, but that would be something else to think about. If I was really, really concerned about this piece, uh, I could put a cold seal or even a hot seal on the opposite side uh, with some uh, three millimeter glass rod, and then that would be okay. So right now this weld looks pretty good. Uh, it's got a little bit of a bump in it uh, because of the uh, excess glass when I pulled it off that I didn't, uh, I didn't remove that excess, but that's more aesthetic than anything else uh, at this point. And there we go. So now I've basically got this little square, I've got a grid, and whatever you were trying to make, this is, this is your starting point, right? I could take this and put legs on it, and now I've got a little sample holder or even uh, uh, potentially like a little stand. Uh, if I connect, if I make another one of these and connect them together, uh, I could start to make essentially a cube uh, or do all kinds of, uh, of things like that. But even if you don't uh, want to make something like this for a specific uh, function, a specific piece of equipment or, or uh, some uh, application that you're trying to use, just the exercise of taking the three millimeter tubing, bending it to shape, welding it, welding on the uh, uh, centerpiece, and then spending the time to clean up the welds. Again, when I first was learning glass blowing, I would have just tacked these two things together uh, till they didn't break, till they didn't break apart, and then I would have said good enough. Uh, I would have never taken the time. Uh, to really heat these two and have them flow together. And it's because uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I had some training, uh, but at the end of the day, I never actually practiced or uh, spent that much time uh, looking at attention to detail uh, because I just wanted something that would work. And if it broke later on, no big deal. But this, like I said, is, is for you. Uh, who, if you're watching this video, hopefully you are trying to learn uh, some of the fundamentals of uh, scientific glass blowing. Uh, so I would highly recommend get yourself uh, some three millimeter rod. Uh, you don't need uh, a very expensive torch. Uh, again, a uh, uh, the Smith mini torch in this case uh, runs from like I think about a. $125, maybe up to $150, depending on like what accessories you get. Uh, I do have an aftermarket uh, uh, torch nozzle on here, which is actually a little bit more expensive. Uh, and I'll, I'll put that information uh, 
in, in the video at some point. Uh, but uh, the, the setup uh, is pretty compact, relatively cheap uh, compared to uh, certain of the, uh, the other bench burners. You can also get you do this with a, a small bench burner, uh, by the way. But the nice thing with the mini torch is just how compact everything uh, is as far as uh, the gas cylinders uh, that need to feed it. Because obviously, if this the bigger this torch is, the more fuel and oxygen it's going to go through. Uh, so again, that's why I like uh, using uh, this this micro torch uh, for this particular uh, exercise. So there we go.